The beautiful and incredibly talented Kiki Palmer has been opening up about her struggle with adult hormonal cystic acne. She went on IG last year sharing some barefaced selfies and stating that her whole life she's been dealing with acne and recently discovered this was because of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Just last week, she opened up about her journey with this condition. So I kind of discovered that that's what I was dealing with and it answered a lot of the questions to not only why I had acne, but you know, why I grow hair on my face or under my chin, you know, kind of have like a low-key beard going on that I gotta shave. She also posted a video over on her YouTube channel sharing her skincare journey, the different products and lifestyle practices that she credits for improving her skin condition. Many of you guys have been tagging me nonstop to react, and so that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to discuss some of the products that she's used that helped her. We'll also go over some different skincare tips and tricks if you yourself are struggling with adult hormonal cystic acne. For anyone new here, hello, I'm Alexis. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now all acne in some sense is hormonal acne. So when we're talking about this type of adult cystic hormonal acne, we're specifically referring to the type of acne that happens in your mid to late 20s and beyond. There's usually a sudden increase in more oiliness of the skin, jawline and chin cystic acne can even be on the neck, the upper chest and the back. And these cysts can be really painful. They are often accompanied with hair growth, so upper chin or jawline. You may notice some thinning of the hair, abnormal menses. If any of these things are starting to ring a bell, I highly advise you seek your OBGYN and dermatologist because blood work can be done to determine whether or not your hormone levels are abnormal. PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is a condition in which too much male hormone is being made, specifically testosterone. And you may be experiencing things like facial hair, cystic acne, weight gain, or deepening of the voice. However, it's super important to note that hormonal acne does not necessarily mean that you have increased level of hormone in the body. There's something called N receptor sensitivity. Now every oil gland or sebaceous gland has a receptor on it. If your receptor is exceptionally sensitive to hormones, you are more likely to have hormonal acne because that receptor will then stimulate the oil gland to produce more oil. So I don't want you to automatically assume that you have an increase in hormones in the body just because you have hormonal acne. So this is why it's super important to speak with your doctor if you have adult hormonal cystic acne to see whether or not a blood test is even something that you should look into. Now you can't really get a good grip and understanding of acne without understanding that there are multiple different layers of the skin. There's the stratum corneum or the uppermost layer followed by the epidermis and then the dermis which is where everything lives. I'm talking about your hair follicles, your elastin, your collagen, your sebaceous gland or your oil gland. Now we all have oil glands that help to deliver oil to the top layer of the skin and this is what helps to keep us moisturized. But in patients with acne there is an overstimulation, an overactivity of this oil gland and it can become large. So when the gland itself starts to pump out too much oil, it actually enlarges the channel that brings that oil to the top layer of the skin. And this is what makes those patients with oily acne prone skin look like they have larger pores. It's because there's just so much activity happening downstream. Now things that cause overstimulation are hormones, which we're talking about, but also stress, diet, and genetics. So now you have a channel that's enlarged which is making the pore itself more dilated and bacteria that's normally sitting in our skin can kind of fall into this crater. You've got all this excess oil and dead skin cells start to build up on it. It's really hard for it to have any type of exit. This is when you can get things like papules, pustules, and even cysts or nodules. Let's say it has been there for a while. It's red, it's inflamed, and it is cystic. That cyst can actually get so much pressure inside that it can rupture and that's when you start to get acne scarring. So that was a huge oversimplification of acne just so you have a little bit of an overview of what's going on so that you actually know why you use certain products to help certain conditions in your acne. Okay, so now let's talk about treatments. There are the things that you can do on your own before you ever get to the doctor. And then there are, of course, the things that you can get prescribed from the physician. First, let's talk about the things that you can do on your own before you even get in to see the doctor. Focus on products that can help to decrease oil production, can help to regulate your oils, can also help to decrease inflammation both within the body and within the skin. So topical products that we know that can do this are going to be antioxidants, but also products like a salicylic acid 
acid and retinoids because these can help to decrease the overproduction of oil and they have anti-inflammatory properties. Another fantastic thing that you can do on your own is to exfoliate to help all of those dead skin cells that get built up and trapped within the oil glands. So things like glycolic, lactic, mandelic acid are going to be a huge friend of yours if you are suffering with cystic acne. All right, so now that you guys know the main ingredients that you want to incorporate into your own skincare routine, let's go through Kiki's routine so that we can react and see the different ingredients that she's used that help to improve her skin. So first things first, you always wanna start off your routine with a cleanser. She is starting off with the Cetaphil cleanser. This is a super gentle cleanser. This is a great cleanser, especially the new formula that's including things like glycerin, which is a humectant, and B5, which is known as panthenol. Also, there's niacinamide or vitamin B3. So they've basically improve the formula by taking out some of the harsher sulfates and incorporating more gentle sulfates. And then they also included some ingredients that can help to really further nourish and moisturize and repair the skin barrier. So I love this because your first step of cleansing is where you wanna make sure that you set the stage right for the rest of your routine. And she's doing a great job here with her Cetaphil cleanser. It's certainly not enough to remove makeup or sunscreen. So you would wanna go in with like an oil cleanser first or a cleansing balm first, um, and then you could follow it up with the Cetaphil cleanser. She then moves into Anoxema and Sea Breeze. These are things that have camphor and menthol and eucalyptus oil and peppermint oil. A lot of people with oily prone skin love them because they give this cooling, tingly sensation to the skin. They make you feel really clean afterwards and you feel like you remove the excess oils. But just be careful because they can be a little bit too drying for the majority of people. She mentions that camphor really works for her. I always say that skin is not one size fits all. These are products that help her. These are products that I usually tell my patient to be really careful with because they can indeed be sensitizing or irritating to the skin. Let's see what else is in the routine. So the Polish Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant is an absolutely fantastic product. This is hands down one of my favorite products. It's even in my skincare regimen. I love it. So what this product does is it helps to unclog the pores in a very gentle manner. It helps to promote even skin tone and it has anti-inflammatory products. It is a fantastic choice. If you find that you are sensitive to using a BHA or 2% salicylic acid that is a leave-on product, you may wanna actually find a cleanser that has salicylic acid in there so that you can reap a lot of the same benefits but minimize the risk of any irritation that you may have on the skin by leaving it on the skin. But in general, this is a very well-tolerated product. Salicylic acid is a fantastic ingredient if you are dealing with adult hormonal cystic acne. Highly recommend, amazing choice. So the Belief Water Balm has amazing things like ceramides and glycerin, which is a humectant, and they help to repair the skin barrier, really keep you nice and moisturized. It does have a fragrance in there, so if you are someone who is sensitive to fragrance or trying to avoid fragrance, another really great choice would be the Polish Choice Omega Rich Moisturizer. It is so good. They make a lightweight one and a more nourishing or rich heavy one. It also is fantastic if you have hyperpigmentation because it's rich in linoleic fatty acids that help to decrease tyrosinase, which is that enzyme that promotes too much pigment in the skin. So it's a really great choice if you're looking for a moisturizer that can also help with your pigment. I have an entire video on best moisturizers for pigmentation. I'll link it down here or here or somewhere but let's keep going. Yes, so this is the perfect way to end your skincare routine with a sunscreen. The Tracy Hudson SPF 50 Plus is a hybrid, so it's both a chemical and a physical sunscreen, and it has really great ingredients. It's got squalane and antioxidants and green tea and polyphenols, so it's anti-inflammatory, it's protecting you from the sun. It's a really great product. So I love a lot of the different things that she's using here. So definitely a great way to build a solid routine. You've got a good cleanser in there. You've got salicylic acid followed by a nice moisturizer and a sunscreen. I would add an antioxidant in there before the sunscreen, so something like a vitamin C, something with anti-inflammatory properties. And then of course your nighttime routine should include a retinol or a retinoid, um, but a really good start for the morning. These are the things that you can do at home to really help 
And there are so many foods that we know can help to decrease inflammation. It's actually been proven that drinking two cups of spearmint tea every day can help to decrease the excess testosterone. There's an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase that converts testosterone to an even more potent form of testosterone, and this can really cause a cystic acne. There are 5-alpha reductase inhibitors that are naturally found in things like kale, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli. Other dietary solutions include swapping high glycemic index or sugary foods for lower ones. When we eat a high GI meal, our blood sugar levels go up, which stimulate the release of insulin, which increases the level of something called IGF-1 and testosterone. These all increase oil production that can clog our pores and cause acne. Now, I'm definitely not telling you to cut carbs altogether. Just make sure that you're pairing your carbs with things like a fiber and protein and fat to slow down the release of that sugar or insulin level. Another really great solution is to focus on anti-inflammatory foods. So things that are rich in omega-3s like salmon or trout, walnuts and flax seeds and algae. There are other studies that show that milk may actually increase IGF-1, so consider using dairy alternatives. Intermittent fasting has also shown promising results for those with insulin resistance. So just make sure to incorporate some of these key ingredients into your regimen. Skin is not one size fits all. It's literally as unique as you are, but trying to make sure you hit the different categories is super important when you're fighting this condition. And you're definitely going to want to sync your skincare products to your menstrual cycle. I have an entire video on how to do so. I will link it down below or somewhere here, but it's really detailed on how you can sync your products to the different phases of your menstrual cycle that can help tremendously. Now, truth be told, if you have severe cystic acne, you're probably going to need to see your dermatologist for one of the anti-androgen or anti-male hormone treatments. There's birth control, there's things like spironolactone, and there's a new topical called Wenlevy. Now, not all birth control is created equal when it comes to hormonal cystic acne. You truly want a birth control that is third generation or later. So those with low progesterone and high estrogen profiles like orthotricycline low and Yaz can be extremely helpful. And of a side note, too much progesterone can cause some hyperpigmentation issues, which we definitely don't want. Spironolactone is an anti-androgen, so it helps to decrease the amount of free circulating androgen that can stimulate those oil glands. It also helps to decrease facial hair but can help to increase the amount of hair growth on the scalp. So you may want to speak to your doctor about this if you are experiencing facial hair, thinning hair, and the cystic acne. There's a new topical medication called clascoderone or Wenlevy, and it helps to decrease the activity of androgens. So this is something that can be prescribed by your doctor for both men and women. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If so, please give it a thumbs up, share with anyone who may find it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and until next time, be well.